from MLI. Uh, to begin, we looked at the measurement of sound levels using the Decibel X app. We varied the distance between loudspeaker and smartphone to observe how the levels decreased. And this was repeated at three different frequencies using three different smartphones. It was concluded that a doubling of distance led to a mean sound level decrease of between three and seven decibels, and this was at each frequency. The greatest decrease was at 512 hertz. We then decided it would be interesting to take sound level measurements around the school buildings and see how these change during a typical day. We chose 35 locations around the school. At each location, the mean sound level over a 10 second time period was taken. Measurements at 10 different times across each school day during a five day school week. This gave us 1,750 measurements but what to do with all this data? Hello, my name is Shay. As a football fan, I'm used to seeing heat maps displaying the time spent by football players in various locations around the pitch. This gives us the idea of somehow representing the sound levels around the school on a heat map. This would also allow us to see how the heat map changed with time. We first imagined the plan of the school to be an imaginary grid. Here, each measurement location was positioned on this grid, with each decibel level being given a colour on a scale between 20 and 90 decibels. We assumed that all measurements were to be point source of sound, so unmeasured locations were filled in, representing a reduction in sound levels between these point sources. We then applied a blur over the filled image to create a smoother heat map. Here, the plan of the school was overlaid. There was one image for one time a day. We repeated this for each of the times and days, creating 50 images. Putting these together and adding the silo gave us a final interactive heat map. Just to let this image play out, <laughs> so you can see the beautiful heat map at work. My name is Ashton Billet, and we are aware that our methodology is not without flaws. First of all, we assumed each measurement to be a point source of sound, but in reality it's the combination of numerous sources of sound around it, each with diminishing effect with increasing distance. We also only took each reading as a snapshot of 10 seconds every hour. This meant that some repeating sounds, such as the bells, that didn't fall within those 10 seconds were not picked up at all, and some random one-off noises can make the environment appear much noisier when looking at the measurements. If we were to say take multiple readings at each time across multiple weeks and calculate a mean, this would reduce the effect of these random errors. We wanted a way of recording sound at shorter intervals, so we decided that a Raspberry Pi would be the way ahead. We set up the Pi with temperature, humidity and sound level sensors and it records these every three seconds and broadcasts them to the competition entry website. This essentially gives us a means of continually monitoring the sound in one area. So, while taking measurements for the competition, it was clear that there's an issue with the school bells. Measured from a distance of one meter from any of the bells, the sound levels registered at 115 decibels. Some of the bells are located above classroom doors where teachers stand to meet and greet their students. This can be extremely unpleasant and harmful to both hearing and personal well-being. Students and staff were subsequently surveyed and their feelings about the school bells were quite revealing. It was overwhelmingly felt that the bells were too loud. We took this issue to our school governors and they agreed that something should be done. It's recommended that you shouldn't be exposed to sound levels of 85 decibels for more than eight hours a day. As sound intensity doubles with in each increase of three decibels, the safe exposure time halves. Our school bells are 115 decibels and 28 seconds of exposure per day is enough to cause damage to hearing. Now our bells bring 14 times a day in each school day for four seconds, which is double the recommended exposure time. Even if we have less than 28 seconds of exposure, loud noises can be annoying. It's bad enough for most people, but imagine how people with sensory sensitivities feel. 
In our school alone, there's 33 people who have these sensitivities, and this is a huge issue for us. Here, we mapped out the location of all the bells around the school using our heat map. We assumed that each of the bells was to be single sources of 150 decibels. We knew that the bells needed to be heard throughout the whole school, meaning there needed to be sufficient coverage of the whole building. However, we suggested that adequate coverage could still be reached, but with quieter bells. More than with bells of 70 decibels, we saw there was little impact on the coverage. However, there was a large reduction in downloads experience for people standing near these bells. Therefore, we concluded that more bells yet quieter bells would be the ideal solution. Now, we're aware that the installation of new bells all around the school would be costly. However, there are other possible solutions. First of all, we can reduce the duration that the bells ring for. This is currently around four seconds. And this would in turn reduce the exposure to the noise. However, it would still be quite unpleasant to be near the bells when they go off. Bells could also be dampened to produce a quieter noise in the first place. And initial testing used a rubber sleeve like this, and I've also got one here if any of you want to look at it afterwards. Um, and this reduced the sound level from around 115 decibels to 105, which halves the perceived loudness. This is very promising and it's now being installed around the school. Further investigation could also be carried out using different alert sounds and the effects of them on well-being. Um, so you can see the IOA competitions really inspired our students. They gathered a huge amount of data and had to think very creatively about how to present that data. They identified a real issue and presented that um, the solutions to the governing body, a team of non-scientists. So having to communicate that uh, made, made it really focus their, their mind. As a direct result of the IOA competitions, the engagement in not just acoustic activities, but STEM activities generally in our school has been massive. Um, so each year we welcome IOA ambassadors to the school who work with our students on various acoustic activities. Um, they also talk about careers in acoustics. Now, the, the field of acoustics was, before the competitions, to us just unheard of, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> but it's just a, a massive focus now on, 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 on acoustics. So we, we welcome uh, people from the University of Sussex Acoustics Department. Um, they take our Year 10 students on work experience each year. Uh, Dr Mamoli here gave us a really interesting talk on acoustic levitation as well as other things. So this is to Year 10, Year 8. So right down the year groups, acoustics is actually um, being, being noticed for the first time really. We also managed to take a whole year group to the Anacoic Chamber at the ISVR in Southampton, which was an amazing experience, which not many people have. And there's also been other benefits. Um, Dr. Mamoli introduced us to some acoustics papers, which 150 students in our school uh, reviewed prior to publication, which is a, an excellent opportunity for them. And finally, 300 students currently are assisting the uh, UCL uh, a PhD research project looking specifically at the soundscape of a learning environment and its effect on well-being. So uh, that, that's an ongoing PhD project which we're delighted to be involved with. Um, so I think the IOA, by engaging with schools and teachers and students, you're actually exposing future scientists to the real world uh, of acoustics, engineering, STEM, uh, subjects and it's really inspired students to not just take up further study in these STEM subjects but also to consider careers which they uh, prior to this would not have realised even existed. So I uh, thank you very much for listening and the students and I will be delighted to answer any of your questions and as we're uh, in a, a room full of industry experts we would also welcome your opinions on how perhaps we could have presented the data was a heat map accurate and so on? So any any suggestions there would be really welcome. So thank you for listening.